Greetings, my friends. Welcome back. Your guiding light, Rush Limbaugh, America's real anchorman, the truth detector, the doctor of democracy, and general all-around good guy, a harmless, lovable little fuzzball, here executing assigned host duties flawlessly, zero mistakes. So the uh, the Super Bowl ends yesterday. Uh, I, you know, I normally, as I said earlier in the program, I, I guess I never got in the habit. I never watched them live. I always saw them either when they leaked in advance uh, or afterwards because I was always getting up out of the seat or never was in my seat. I was actually just running around attending to people, guests and so forth, or as a visitor. But when the commercials came on, it's, uh, it, was, it was break time. Yesterday, I sat through them. I watched them. And I can't tell you the number of spots went by. And I look at Catherine. Who's this for? What, what, what is this ad for? The Nissan ad was. I didn't know it was a car ad, much less Nissan, until the end of it. Then a nationwide ad came on with the, uh, with the dead child. I said, what in the name of Sam Hill is that? What in the world is going on? And then as I watched, ladies and gentlemen, I spotted what I thought was the, the theme of advertising this year. I have spoken in the past on how advertising is a barometer of where our culture is. National advertising, that if you pay attention to it, you can get a good idea of what product marketers think our culture is all about. Because it's their objective, it's their responsibility in advertising to relate to people in order to separate them from their money. Well, let's face it, that's what advertising is about. That's one of the reasons why leftists hate it, because it's capitalism on steroids. And it's about getting you to spend money, and and they just hate that. But in order to be successful, they got to know to whom they're advertising. And one of the ways they do it now, there's constant research being taken. There's focus groups. There are polls. I mean, there's research out the wazoo because all of this advertising costs so much that everybody's trying to get the biggest bang for the buck. And so if you look at national advertising in a Super Bowl as sort of a reflection of or a snapshot of American values and American cultural thinking at the moment in target demographics, primarily 25 to 54, then you can pretty much bank on the fact that this is how the smart money sees the country. So Nationwide unveiled an ad last night of a little kid talking about the things he would never do. It turned out because he was dead. That, that, I said, what is the message here? I know they're trying to sell insurance. I just thought the timing was kind of bad. Here you have the Super Bowl, which is America's party, and it doesn't lend itself to depressing ads. But what was the tactic? Timing aside, maybe the timing was bad. What was the tactic? What was the strategery? How how was Nationwide trying to separate you from your money and sell an insurance policy? And it was guilt. Guilt tripping. They sized up the target audience as highly susceptible to guilty plays. Um, emotional manipulation was seen as a weak spot for today's parents of young children. And people uh, people who grew up in liberal schools of indoctrination and people who teach in liberal schools of indoctrination, look at what they were taught. Look at the current crop of educators and the current crop of leftist leaders were taught to feel guilty about thermostats being too high in the winter and too low in the summer. 
They were taught to be guilty about the lighting they were using in their homes. They were taught to feel guilty about the kind of cars they were driving. They were taught to be guilty about the food they were eating. The guilt tripping was robustly manifested in the issue of climate change and global warming. And it was a guilt trip from beginning to end in trying to make people feel guilty for it, while at the same time providing absolution for the sin. Look what you've done by driving that car. Look what you've done by eating that Big Mac. Look what you've done by using that light bulb. Look what you've done by heating your home too high. Look what you've done by cooling your house too much. But here's how you can save the planet from your attempted destruction. Here comes the ad for whatever car that the polar bear thanks you for buying, for saving his life. Here comes the ad for an insurance policy that will make it all better if your child dies. Uh, so the, the theme in, in, in much of recent advertising has been, we're killing Mother Earth. A generation who would cure racism by electing a black community organizer who surrounds himself with bigots and racists is now being accused of all kinds of guilt. So nationwide, I thought they went hunting for customers who are suckers for guilt trips. And if you look at some of the other ads, uh, and I'm having trouble thinking off the top, there was... uh, the, the, the Chevrolet ad, there was a Chevrolet ad I particularly liked because technique-wise it was brilliant. It was for the truck. And it was, it looked to be uh, a blimp shot of Jiffy Pop Field. Remember that? And do you remember? And, and then all of a sudden there was an interruption in the feed. And the picture went dark for a while. And you thought the game feed had just been lost. When that happens, it's like dead air here on the radio. See? You say, what happened? What happened? It perks you up. You're, oh my God, is there something wrong? You start turning the volume up. Well, on TV, it got your attention. And when a few seconds went by, then they hit you with the fact that they were selling you a Chevrolet truck. Technique-wise, that was brilliant. Uh, and there wasn't any guilt tripping on that. I mean, not everything was a guilt trip. But I just, I'm just uh, thematically, it seemed to me that the, that the ads, particularly of the products, I didn't even identify. I, I didn't even know what they were for. There was still this, this uh, notion that we need to fix them. We've been bad. We've kind of been not nice and up to snuff. So something in their focus grouping. I'm telling you, they don't do this blind, and they don't do this gone gut hunch anymore. The great advertisers of old, the Mad Men days, it was gut hunch. The the what now? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, the McDonald ads. That's, that's that. Um, w- random acts of love by not charging you. Go to McDonald's because randomly you could be given a random act of love as evidenced by a free meal at McDonald's. Um, so it's highly emotional appeals. But back in the old days, in the Mad Men days, they were just on the verge of computerized databases then. And in the 50s and 60s, and they were just starting on, on market research. But back then, the good old days, of all, it was all gut hunch. I mean, that's why the brilliant advertisers were the brilliant advertisers. They didn't need a focus group to devise a great advertising campaign for a client to sell the product and reach millions. Today, nobody trusts anybody's gut. You've got to do the focus grouping. 
You've got to do the product research. You've got to do the data. You've got to do the interviews and all. So you can't take a chance if this commercial is going to cost us what? What does Super Bowl commercial cost? I don't even know this year. Okay, so if you're going to spend four and a half million dollars on a Super Bowl commercial, you had better make sure you we're not going to do this blind blind. And so that all the focus group these people did, the, the, the research must have told them that the way to separate people from their money is to guilt trip them. That's what I concluded from some of this stuff. You know, one of my all-time favorite products ran their first ever Super Bowl spot yesterday. Mophie. Mophie, Mophie ran their first ever. Mophie's going gangbusters. They're the external battery pack and case for uh, iPhones and uh, what's the other brand? Samsung, that's right, Samsung, uh, and and some of the others. Uh, uh, Mophie was the first to come along with a decent-sized battery in the case that gave you at least double the battery life. Uh, and they're doing so well they could afford a Super Bowl commercial yesterday. And their ad was good, I thought. But some of the others, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't quite get. And and, and how about Budweiser? They went back to the dog and horse the second year in a row. I mean, now, if you if you didn't see last year's dog and horse pony show, uh, I imagine the ad this year was kind of cute, but this, this is a replay of last year's. And what'd that tell you? Last year's ad was gangbusters. It was so good. Why risk anything new? Let's just go back to tried and true. Yeah, maybe I studied this stuff too much, but I find it. I find it all uh, fascinating. And by the way, folks, here at the EIB Network, where we are one of the most recognized and successful advertiser vehicles in all of media, we don't do a single second of focus group research because I instinctively know who you are. I know who you are in my audience, so we don't have to do any of that. So our advertisers don't have to waste any, spend any money in market research or focus grouping, or any of that. All they have to do is trust that I will like the product, and that's done. It's it. It's over with. Because they know that you are who you are, just by virtue of being here. Quick time out. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Yes, the Obama regime. 